Good evening, everyone. Welcome to New Zion Missionary Baptist Church's live streaming here on YouTube and on our website at NewZionBaptist.com. Glad to see you here in the Lord's house today worshiping with us tonight. I'm so tickled to worship the Lord with you here on our prayer time and our Bible study time and also our interview time. I'm glad to have my dear sister, Miss Anita Peeler, with us. Glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. It's awesome to have. She's one of our newest members of New Zion, and, and we'll be talking more to her in, in a little bit and just about a lot of the things that she's doing and wonderful ministries that she has and, and how much we're glad to have her as a part of New Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you so much for, for participating in our videos and all the other ob objects that we can do online. I just want to say thank you, church. You're doing a great job with those things. And I really want to applaud you for sharing the videos that we do to get the word of Jesus Christ and New Zion out there. I'm very appreciative of those things. Nicely done. Nicely done. You know, tonight, before we even get started, as we always do in our church services, let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer, and we'll get to a, a great night of worshiping the Lord together. So let's pray together, if you're good. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for loving us, caring for us, and giving us the grace we need to carry on every day. Father, we thank you for this blessed church and its family that's united even right now. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would bless us as we come together once again through this digital means to worship you and know you in a better way. Father, we pray that through the things that we do tonight, that our prayers would be effectual and that we would see you glorified. And Father, I hope maybe that we would see someone saved too. Father, we thank you for your presence here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You know, on Wednesday nights, if you're joining us for the first time, we want to make you welcome as well. This is a normal kind of format that we have on our Wednesday night services, a little bit different than we normally do. Uh, and, but I do want to invite you to, to come back and visit with us again, invite some friends to be a part of the, the time we get together and just be family here. And that's one of the things we really like to promote. One of our strengths here at New Zion is that we have one of the greatest church families on the face of this earth. And I highly encourage you to join in through this means or, or whatever means possible, when the, especially when the days come when we can get back together and worship here. If you'd like to know our address, it's 2900 Wadesboro Road South, and we would invite you here to come to Benton when all this is over and come and worship the Lord with us. But until that time, we'll continue worshiping the Lord to the best means that we have possible, right? Amen. 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 Tell you what, let's do. Let's go ahead and get started with some prayer requests tonight. And I, by the end, I thank you so much for sending in prayer requests and, and sending them to me. And you can continue to do that as well. Uh, you can do that by sending them on our Facebook page at New Zion on, on Facebook. You can also do that at our website, NewZionBaptist.com. Or you can do that through my cell phone as well at 270-350-2154. 257 uh, Excuse me, 270-350-2154. If you would like to send those to me, I would get to them as close as time as I can to, to our prayer times. Amen. So let me show you. Let's talk about some of the things we have on our prayer list today. Uh, I had a prayer request that we pray for our seniors at, uh, uh, this is actually at the, the trailer park where we're living. We're living at Coach Estates in Murray, Kentucky. And there are a lot of seniors living at that trailer park, and they're far from their family. And they're feeling the distance of being far from the family. And I think that is a prayer request that we could pass along to a lot of folks right now. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get together like we normally would. And, and uh, I want to encourage you to follow all the safety restrictions that are out there on the, that are given to us by uh, our, our CDC, the, our president, and by our governor, as well as our health department. Maintain those distances here. So for example, tonight, here at our prayer time and, and interview time at, in church, uh, we have a very, very minimal staff here. We've only got five people in the whole building, and, uh, and we're trying to maintain our distance. That's why we're sitting so far apart. And I did take a bath today, Miss Anita. That's a good thing. <laughs> but we're trying to obey all the rules. In fact, I called to this, the hotline at, uh, at our governor's office on a regular basis to make sure that what we're doing, even the interview process, they gave an approval of that. So we can continue doing those things. So praise the Lord for that. So let's be praying for our seniors, those who are feeling the, 
the pain of being apart and all the families that are feeling that, many of them are having depression along with their illnesses. Uh, my wife uh, asked that we pray for her Aunt Jean Bolton, and she lives in Cynthiana, Kentucky, and that's where Harrison County, where they're having one outbreaks over there. We haven't seen Miss Jean in quite a while. Bless her heart. Pray for Miss Brenda Carr and her daughter Amanda Carr, uh, and, and uh, they work in the health care field uh, for Gary Bolton as well. Uh, pray for the kids and who are staying at home and, and having to do their school in a new way. That's a real challenge. And uh, let's continue to pray for our youth. And we're praying for you, Brother Jamie, who's back there monitoring our cameras. He's our, not only our IT guy here, but he's also our youth leader. We're praying for you, Brother. Uh, praying for Joyce Smith. Uh, we're also praying for Miss Vi Gold. Now, Miss Vi uh, is the mother of Brother Bill Gold, that's a member here at the church. And she is in the critical care unit at Baptist Hospital. She is really needing our prayers tonight. So I really ask you to do that if you could, please. Remember Miss Gold and, and all the family that's connected with We love them dearly. Also, I've been asked to pray for Bags of Hope Ministries. That's a free food ministry, if you would keep them in your prayers. Also, let's pray for uh, several different unspoken requests tonight. And I have some myself. I'm sure you have some too, Miss Anita. Uh, let's be also be praying for our church, New Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Let's remember our sister churches that are going through the same challenges, stresses that we are as a church family here. Let's remember our president, our, our, our governor as well, and our first responders, our law enforcement and fire. Uh, we have several in, at New Zion that would be under those categories. I think of Joe Ed Smith and, and several that are here and uh, Rachel Lane and Jason Lane and so many others that are here working hard to take care of us. Let's also remember our nursing homes, and we'll talk more about those in a minute. Specifically tonight, I want to remember you, Miss Anita, as we get ready to have prayer time, because I know that you, one of your ministries is at Hickory Woods Senior Living Community, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's remember Madonna Edwards and Christy Monroe. She's in the health care uh, uh, industry. Let's also remember Abby English. She also is working at a nursing home as well. Um, I've also been asked that we remember our teachers, even though they're not in with their children. It's hard for them to be home without their kids. Our teachers are dedicated people who love their kids, and, and I think we're growing in uh, greater appreciation of them every single day. Uh, let's also remember Bill Horn. Uh, he's still recovering from his surgery. Let's also remember... Uh, uh, an unspoken family that's having marital issues. Yes, please. Let's remember them. Uh, that's a difficult time to have problems. A lot of pressure going on. Also, remember our delivery ministry that we're having here at New Zion. It's a delivery ministry to our seniors that we can, if you want to get some groceries, all you have to do is contact me, Brother Dale, and I can coordinate all those younger folks who are volunteered to go to the stores and get food for you. So you don't have to go out and and you could be safe. We really want you to take advantage of that. Thank you very much for those who already have. Uh, let's uh, also remember Valerie Bell. Uh, she is uh, uh, she has the coronavirus. Now she's uh, a friend with uh, Shirley Parker. And amen. So there, pray for pray for that as well. Uh, pray for Joyce Thompson. That's uh, Martha Littrell's mother-in-law. Uh, she broke her ankle. Oh, my goodness. Uh, also, let's remember my dad, J.B. Taylor. They had a tornado down in Alabama. Didn't do any damage to any structures, but it took a swath through the farm down there. So please remember that as well. Also, remember my dad's good friend and neighbor, Amos McCarty, as he's fighting cancer. Uh, let's remember Anita Haynes' son, Matt. He's had to have emergency surgery, and let's, let's call that one uh, for an unspoken reasons. Uh, let's remember Brianna Floyd and her boyfriend Jacob Landis. They were hit head on by a drunk driver the other day. I think they're going to be okay, uh, but continue to pray for them. They're really, really sore. Uh, also, let's remember John Morgan, and he still has some severe health issues. And Julie Lane's mom, Carl Smith, uh, Carol Smith, uh, let's remember her. Uh, my good friends, I got a call from him the other day. His name is Otis Allen. He lives in Alaska, went to school with him, and he is under uh, 
uh, sequestering, so to speak. He is in Alaska, and uh, he's being quarantined for 14 days because he had to take a trip to Washington State, and it was on an airplane and with all those people and everything, so he's playing it safe. And we're also remembering Catherine and Ronnie Connor. And if you had not got a chance to get a prayer request in to us tonight, I highly recommend that you take advantage of the time that we have together to pray. We can pray for you anytime. So let me know and we can put it out on our prayer chain. And speaking of which, for those church members out there at New Zion who have not gotten a hold of the, the blessing of the Remind Text Network that we have, I highly encourage you to do so. We have a Remind Network which sends out texts blanket text to our church members with prayer requests and announcements. If you're a church member and you would like to be on that prayer network or that contact network, send a message to me, Brother Dale Taylor, and I will get a hold of uh, your phone number and get you hooked up. So please do that. Also, listen something else. Let's remember our tithes and offerings here at New Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Even though we are not together, the church is still actively pursuing ministries and trying to do the best to glorify God in these difficult times. And if you would like to help out by making an, a tithe or offering to New Zion, you can do that by mailing something in at 2900 Wadesboro Road South, Bent, Kentucky, 42025. Or you can do that by going to our website, newsandbaptist.com, and you can click on the little button right there that says tithes and offerings, and you can help out that way. You can also call me up, and if you would like to uh, uh, have someone pick that up, just leave it in a place that's secure outside, and we don't even have to come by and do that. I've got several that's doing that, so praise God for that. Thank you for your efforts in the, on those things, and thank you, church. We love you. Tonight, let's have a time of prayer. I know you're at your homes, and I know you're listening, but we are here as the Lord says, in the Lord's presence, where two or more are gathered together, the Lord is in our midst. So church, let's gather together tonight and let's seek the Lord in prayer. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we have a lengthy list for sure tonight, but that doesn't mean that you're a limited God. There's no list too long or too big for you. Father, we are gathered together. Though we may be physically apart, we are gathered together tonight to seek your face and Father, one of the first things that jumps off the page for us is that we're praying for our nation. We're praying for our nation, Lord, that, that this plague and this plague that's happening all around the world, we're praying for this well, that this plague of the coronavirus would find some remedy to your power or that you would give wisdom to our physicians and researchers that they might find a remedy for these things. Father, there's so many that are sick with this and, and so many that are in danger of this. Lord, help us to take this seriously as we pray hard, Lord, and seek your power that we might find safety by your protection, but also wisdom by doing those things that you prescribe to us through the wisdom of those who care for us. Father, we want to say thank you for God giving us an avenue to worship you together, such as this website and, and the digital means of YouTube. But, Father, this prayer list that we have mentioned is very long. And, Father, there's so many unspoken that I can't even mention them all today if I was given 10 hours. Father, you know every single one of them. You know every concern. Father, you know that there are some in our congregation right now with broken hearts. Father, there's some that are scared. Father, some that are worried about, about other multiple things. And, and, Father, there's some that just need contact. Father... You are the perfect one to all those needs. But Lord, I pray that you not only do those things yourself, but show us what we can do as a church to reach out to and stay connected. Father, I thank you for New Zion Missionary Baptist Church and how you're rising up a, a great cloud of witnesses amongst us. Father, I pray for peace. I pray for unity. I pray, Lord, for the love to overwhelm us not just your love, but our love for each other. Father, we're going to make it through this because you are our God. And we thank you, Lord, for the wonderful gift of fellowship through these means. So, Lord, as we pursue the greatness that you have put before us, help us run the race with grace and mercy and kindness. But, Lord, most of all, help us to run the race according to your design. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church. Thank you for praying.
Again, I'm really thankful that you chose to join with us tonight. Please invite someone else to come join us so we can all pray together. Remember, there's power in prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight I'm especially honored to have you, Miss Anita. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you for now, inviting me. Amen. Now, Miss Anita, I know that you are the, are you the, the manager? Are you the, the chief cook and bottle washer? What is your position? All at, executive director. Executive director. That's, you're the executive director at Hickory Woods Senior Living Community in Callaway County. Yes. Amen. Now, how long have you been there? 23 years. 23 years. I started when nobody knew what assisted living was. Amen. You know, that has changed mm -hmm. over time, hasn't it? Has. it? Mm -hmm. And we've grown. Uh, we started with 44 assisted living apartments. And uh, about five years ago, we added on 20 memory Alzheimer's uh, apartments. Amen. So uh, it's a different license. It's personal care. And then uh, two or three years ago, we started adding independent living cottages or villas. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I have so, driven by over there. I have to say I've not been in there yet. I, normally, I go to the ones where our members are. And, 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 uh, but I, as I've driven by, it looks beautiful on the outside. It's pretty nice. It looks very nice, in fact. <laughs> nice. You know, I, I'm, I'm very thankful that you are one of our new members here. And, and you joined just before all the coronavirus came down, and you and Brother Charles Peeler have been good family friends for a long time. A long what an time. honor it is yes. to worship God with yes. you and again. Uh, we have a history together. Uh, I know my father played music with your parents. Yes. And we were talking a moment ago how my dad and her parents played music on the roof of a drive-in theater years ago. Uh, maybe we'll save that for a different story. That sometime. was memorable. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and Brother Charles and, and, and Miss Anita were our song leaders when my wife and I were young. And we were at Sugar Creek Baptist Church, and he was my song leader. Your husband was my song leader when, and you played piano too. A little bit. When I surrendered to ministry. Mm -hmm. So praise the Lord. So we go back away. So I'm so tickled to worship with you. Uh, we're so tickled to be here. Well, we, uh, the first time came in, we knew this is where we wanted to be. Amen. I, I pray that God identifies his house to the person he wants to be at that house. Definitely. And it was so odd that uh, when we left the other church uh, that night, we drove home and, and I asked Charlie, where would you like to go to church next Sunday? And he said, I saw Brother Dale at the uh, association meeting, mm -hmm. and he said, come out and see me sometime. <laughs> and he said, never even dreamed that he'd be able to do that because he was singing. And so that's where we came. Amen. And loved it the first time we came. Oh, in the short period of time that y'all have been here, y'all have already become a great asset here. Mm -hmm. I mean, your, your, your great spirit, great willingness to... to to praise the Lord and your faithfulness here is already inspirational. And we're proud to have you here. Uh, of course, I had my knee surgery. Yes, right off the bat. Right off the bat. In fact, you were, I was very concerned about you when you came forward. The, uh, when you joined the church, I was concerned about you even standing up. But boldly here, you and <laughs> we Charlie We talked came. about it, and Charlie wanted to join that Sunday. I said, if I can make it down there, if I can walk down there, we'll, we'll do it. So, Amen. But anyway, I did. And y'all, me sit by the by the back door so, while you shoot my hand. Shoot hands. <laughs> I, I believe you deserve that. <laughs> the, what a great testimony of your willingness to follow the, uh, the Lord and, and be faithful in, in, in where we, he calls you to be. We knew this is where we wanted to Amen. be. Amen. Uh, I'm thankful that you're here. You and Brother Charlie are a great blessing Things work to out us. the way they're supposed to They do. Out. They always work out the way God wants them to. And I was telling be. you about Hickory Woods, how that worked out. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I was going to ask you some questions about that. I, I hear that's kind of an interesting story about how it you is. became a part of Hickory Woods. Yes. Tell us a story about uh, that. Of course, we've always lived in Murray. Uh -huh. But uh, at that time, we were living in Paducah. And I was managing uh, huge departments at at Lourdes. Uh-huh, right. And I had, like, the business office, medical records, and uh, admissions offices. And um, you were just starting to hear a little bit about assisted living, and Murray was building Hickory Woods. Right. So Charlie was going back and forth to take care of his mother in Murray, mm -hmm. and I was working at Lourdes, and uh, I was thinking more and more about it, and I told him, I said, next time you go see your mom, Stop by and get the phone number off of the sign where they're building that. Right. 
So he did, and I called him one Friday afternoon and said I'd be interested in applying for a job. She said, can you come right now? And I said, no, I'm at work. I can't come now. But uh, she said, well, come Monday. So I, I went on Monday for the interview, and uh, I went back to the car after my interview, and I called Charlie, and I said, well, you can forget that because I'm not going to get this job. And I really? said, that's the shortest interview I've ever had. So anyway, <laughs> I, that week, uh, Lourdes sent me to Ch Chattanooga meeting. Uh -huh. And while I was gone, uh, they called me. And uh, she asked Charlie if I was going to be home on Saturday. Right. And he said yes. So I figured she was calling me to offer me the job. But I wasn't exactly sure, I, I, why would you be calling me to tell me I, I wasn't going to get the job? Right, right. So anyway, uh, that Saturday morning, uh, we had just bought a house in, uh, in Paducah. And he said, I'm going up the road to see the people we bought the house from to see how to work the, the fireplace. Right. He couldn't get the fireplace to work. So anyway, he was gone that morning. She called me and told me that I had the job if I wanted it. Wow. And he came back and he said, I've sold the house. The so, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. So him not even knowing you had accepted that job mm -hmm. or, or offered the job, Charles already sold the brand new yes. house he just bought. Yes, the people wanted it back. They wanted it back. That we sold it to. So uh, anyway, wow. so he sold the house and uh, I got the job all that morning. See, that's just evidence of mm -hmm. God at work. And they'd already that. told us, because we talked to a real estate person, they said, the real estate is not moving. You, you can forget selling anything. Really? Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, it all worked out. Well, and so I took a huge salary cut. I can imagine. You know, because Lourdes, I had 80 employees at Lourdes. Yes. And uh, I was a top manager there. But it didn't matter. I knew that wasn't where I wanted to be. Amen. And uh, it was all about meetings and uh, that sort of thing. I wasn't really with patients and residents. Right. Because I came from some doctor's offices, and I worked for Dr. Howard, if you remember him, mm -hmm. and Dr. Yes. Termas. Yes, I remember And I him. loved uh, directly working with the people. And uh, in that kind of work, I wasn't really getting that. Well, amen. So, you know, I can see the Lord all over this. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe everyone who works in a nursing care facility or hospital, they have to have some type of calling of the Lord to do that. You I mean, to. you have to have compassion, and compassion is a gift of God. Yes. And, and uh, to do what you do, I believe that's a calling. It I, is a calling. I really believe There's, that. And, and I tell my employees, uh, actually in the beginning, I said, we can have the most beautiful facility in the world, mm -hmm. but if we don't love and take care of these residents, it means nothing. Because, amen. And nothing is more important than taking care of somebody's mom and daddy. Oh, amen, amen. I still see people from 20 years ago that maybe their mom or dad live with me, and they are so thrilled to see me. And they'll say, oh, I remember when mom was there, you know, and Bless how much heart. she enjoyed it and that sort of thing. You know, I, I've heard some, uh, some information about how not only you look at this as a ministry, how you let the Lord lead you in these things, but you're not the only one that does that there. Yeah. Can you tell us some of the, some, you told me some stories about some of the people, how that you pray yes. and, and, yes. and some and, of the leaders there. In our there. company um, that owns us is called Good Works Unlimited. Good Works Unlimited. Good Works Unlimited. And actually, our name comes from Ephesians 2.10. Amen. And our boss says all Great the time, good you know, works. we've been called to do good works. And uh, when we added our memory care unit, right. my boss went to every apartment, we all did, that all the staff, laid the hands on the door of each apartment and prayed over each room. Really? So you're saying that they went over and laid hands in prayer over every single room before mm -hmm. they even before had a resident. Before we opened. Mm -hmm. Amen. And every time he meets with us, like we had a telephone conversation today, all 26 facilities, we were all on the phone together along with my two bosses. And uh, we always end with a prayer. Amen. Now, let me speak to that just a moment. You know, church, so many times there's so much bad press 
that's out there that that Christianity is not welcome in the workplace, that your faith is not welcome in the workplace. And here's a perfect example how how their faith is affecting their work. And, and, and that's, a, that's such a positive thing. You know, that encourages me. And it just makes me, yeah. makes me, I'm about to start preaching, church. You better watch out. But that just makes me so excited to hear that. So your faith is actually a pivotal part of what you do. Absolutely. I don't think I do it without my faith because Amen. it is a very, it's, it's a, it's a, I won't say it's a heavy burden, but it is a big load to carry all the time because I am on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, have been for 23 years. Amen. And, Amen. you know, you never know when you're going to get a phone call. Yes. Uh, yesterday morning, I, I got a phone call at six o'clock and, uh, you know, it's like, does so-and-so need to come to work because she's been around this one that's had the, been tested, right. you know, and that sort of thing. And you have to make those judgment calls, and I always pray that I'm going to make the right decisions. Right. It's tough. It really, and that's just. Especially add, now. And that's, yeah, the extra burden of what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. and I, like, for example, we have uh, 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 Madonna Edwards. She works at a, a nursing care facility, and also Abby English. And, you know, I can. No, I know that they're under additional stress mm -hmm. by, uh, you know, they love their residents, and I know you yes. do too. They truly care. We went and played music at one facility uh, here in, in Marshall County, and you could tell that those, uh, like, I, I saw them. They, they were working, and you could tell they genuinely cared, and I can tell mm -hmm. you genuinely care as oh, well. Yes. It's a challenging job, to say the least, on or even on a regular day basis. I've done chaplain work in a couple of different nursing homes before, and and I, I know that you really have to have love to work there. You do. And, and uh, the greatest <laughs> example of love that we have is our Savior Christ, I'm sure. Absolutely. Well, I'm very proud of you for what you're doing. Now, how many years have you been there? 23 years. And uh, it's been, I could write a book. I can imagine you it could. It would be very interesting. I do <laughs> write a column in the newspaper every week that tells what all we're doing. Amen. You know, and that's people, in the Murray Ledger and Times. It is. People love reading, you know, you know, when we're having camping week or, or whatever. And um, they, like, they like reading and, and seeing what's going on out there. And uh, one of the reasons this shutdown has been so difficult is that we made it through the ice storm right. with flying colors because we could all be together right. and we could do activities yes. and everything, and, and the life went on. It didn't bother us a bit that, you know, there was ice everywhere. But um, now we're apart. You know, everybody's almost isolated to their apartments. We can't eat our meals together. Yes, and, I can imagine. And uh, they can't do activities together, so that's really... That's really been very difficult on them. They've been real troopers, I'll have to say. You know, I, I can't, I'm thankful I, I'm, that I, my mother and father are, are very healthy and they're, they're, they're up and moving around. I can't catch them. <laughs> I've got them sequestered at home so they don't go out. But I, I would really, uh, I could I really understand the trepidation someone would have about uh, the, the, the the heartache they would have from being able to see their loved ones oh. and, and the, the physical touch is what we're missing a lot right definitely, now. Definitely, definitely. And we can't touch them really the way we want to. Amen, you amen. Know, we do help those with showers and, and dressing and things, but it has to be more minimal yes. than we're used to. You know, we are we're actively praying for you and uh, your ministry there and uh, and it's like Madonna and Abby as well as they're, as they're working in the nursing home here in Marshall County, you know, our hearts go out because we want to do things, and many times we don't know what to do. Uh, like here at church, we're not having services anymore. We're having to modify our behaviors, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm constantly on call with the hotline at the governor's office to make sure what we do is on board with the safe guidelines there, but I have people who are wanting to come to church even though we're doing online services and we kind of have to say no, I'm sorry we can't because we got mm -hmm. to maintain those things and but we want to do things we want to pray but and uh, tell us some things that we might be able to do help me maybe <laughs> let me be a coordinator for you is there something that that I could help coordinate for you for your residents 
Well, we're trying to be creative. I can imagine so. And uh, I have two activity people that are pretty creative. And uh, they have a park cart right now that they take around. We call Party it the park cart. Part cart. And <clears throat> every afternoon they take them refreshments of some kind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it may be ice cream or... One day we took them Dairy Queen before the Dairy Queen opened. <laughs> uh, and then they have things on the cart like books and puzzles and anything like that to occupy their time in their apartments. So like crossword puzzle books, uh, word search puzzles? Yes, anything those? at all that you can think of. Okay, church, if you would like to to uh, get anything like that, uh, crossword puzzles or word search puzzles or something, you can, you can call me let me know if you'd be willing to do something like that. Let's see if we can share some of that love. And, and that would be very neat to do. Uh, what or else refreshments, could we... any kind of refreshments. We sat today and, and tried to think of all the different places that we could go and get something different. We did talk to Wendy's. They said they would do the blizzards or, blizzards, or yes, whatever, they, whatever yes. they have there. And, uh, 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 Frosties, I think. Frosties, Frosties yes. the Frosties, yeah. And, uh, oh, I don't know, just all kinds of different restaurants or places that we could go to get different things that they don't just have every day that uh, would be special. So if you can think of anything like that. I'll tell you what, let's uh, do. You and I, let's, let's think about some things in addition to those little things that we mentioned before. And I'll, I'll let everybody know what we can do as a church to minister to our seniors who are in our, our care facilities. That would be a great thing to do. Now, I know it's, it's difficult to, to, to deal with some of the challenges with the residents that are there. Are you facing any challenges trying to help with the, the families that are there? I know you're trying that to help. That's a challenge. I'm yes. sure that's a challenge as well. And I'm sorry for them because they want to see them. And, a yes. and, and we can tell um, our load has really increased mm -hmm. because a lot of things that the families were doing, we're doing. Amen. I can see that. And, yes. of course, uh, even though all of their appointments have pretty much been canceled, um, if they have medications, we pick those up, uh, run errands for them. Uh, the big challenge has been finding the toilet paper. Yes. And uh, Mitzi is one of my activity people. She's gone to like six or eight places on Monday been trying to find toilet paper. Oh, I can so, imagine. <laughs> you know, to be honest with you, uh, I was thinking more of different needs, but if somebody, we were able to That's come up need. with toilet paper, can we get that to you as That's well? That's a need, yes. Okay. okay. Um, all of these things have been difficult. Paper towels. Yes. Um, hand sanitizers. You wouldn't think about it. We all keep those in our pocket. Lysol. You cannot find Lysol oh, that's anywhere. that's a fact. That's a fact. The wipes. We wipe everything down constantly. Uh, the chair rails. Uh, the rails down the halls. The, the knobs. The bathrooms. We're constantly wiping, wiping, wiping. Even though there's not hardly any residents out. Uh, but so many things that are so simple. Our company did send us some masks and uh, gloves and uh, some things like that, that in case we Amen. get a case. Amen. And so we tried to have a backup plan in case we do have somebody that's tested positive and uh, with employees, you mm -hmm. know, you have to think about that too because right. they're out in the world. And uh, I've had about three cases of strep throat. Oh, my. So, yes. And, of course, they call. They're very conscientious and said, I've got a sore throat, this or that. We say, don't come in. You know? Amen. Amen. Let's give it, you know, 72 hours. Be sure you got strep throat. Be sure you got this or, or whatever before you come back to work. So we're trying to be very careful before we clear anybody. Amen. To come back. Amen. And I do want to encourage all those that are, having loved ones in care facilities, and, and all of us as citizens of the state of Kentucky. And let's be very conscientious. Remember to behave in a manner that uh, would be very concerned about the well-being of other folks. And, and is there anything that we need to know as, say, say, if I had a family member in there, is there something you would like for me to know? Well, one of the problems is that every family feels like their mom is unique, Amen. which they are. And I can understand this, yes. You know, there's an exception. Mom has to have a certain kind of drink. You know, mom has to have a certain kind of 
you know, this or that. So um, we had one family, one son that actually was crawling in the window, took the screen off, and was hanging in the window. They know he knew we wasn't supposed oh, to do that. No. So we had one of our people that lives in one of our villas take a picture of him and send it to us. So I had to call him yesterday and say, I know you want to see your mother, and she likes her Coca-Colas, but we'll be glad to get those for her or give them to her. But you don't need to be crawling in the window. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a very rare example, though, I'm so, sure. And, I, you know, and he said, I know, I know, I know. You know, he, he felt really bad, I think, because he was caught. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't think he'll do that anymore. Amen. But everybody's an exception. So, and of course, with our company, it seemed like almost every day it's something different. You know, the first the first time, I think it was on March the 11th, they said, lock the doors. I only right. let home health, hospice, you know, sitters. We have right. people that have sitters. And a certain family in. Then, you know, it was like a few days later, you know, don't let, you know, your families in, except, you know, if they're going to fill their med planner or that sort of thing. And then uh, it was... Don't let them dine together. Right. Everybody's got to be six feet apart. Well, I have 48 residents. So you That's can't, kind of difficult, you isn't You can't it? do that unless you, you know, feed all, all the rooms. And then when you feed them in their rooms, you have to put them in the to-go containers. Right, yes. Then we I... couldn't find to-go containers oh because all the restaurants were closed. So... One of the Missy. lessons here is that you've learned to adapt, haven't Missy you? Missy still goes to all of the dollar stores, and they come back with our edge loaded down <laughs> to-go <laughs> containers. And uh, there again, you're trying to order all these things. You can't order everybody out. Right. So then the next time, they'll say no activities together. And then, um, then the residents are really bored, mm -hmm. and they get ill and bored and depressed yes you yes. know so and we're trying to with what staff we have encourage them and um, try to keep them from getting so depressed you know it is a definitely a ch it's definitely a challenging time for not only the residents but it's for you as well and uh, so tell me how does your faith help you on a daily basis oh <laughs> I couldn't do it without faith and I have a really good friend who uh, has a facility like I do. She's mm -hmm. in Brownsville, Tennessee. And we talk pretty often. We've talked almost every day. And uh, and we kind of cry on each other's shoulders, you Amen. know, and that sort Amen. of thing. And uh, I said, oh, there's no way I'm going to be able to keep this virus out of my building. And she said, now listen, you're, you're thinking like Peter. Mm -hmm. When Peter took his eyes off the Lord, he sunk. So Amen. you keep your eye on the Lord or you're going to sink. So she kind of lifts me up, you know, Good. and lets me know, get back on track. You know, she said, we cannot do it alone. The Lord has to take care of these people. We can do all that we can do, but we can't do everything. Amen. You know, I've just gleaned several things and several potential sermons from what you just said. <laughs> so watch out, church. How important it is for us to be even though we're not physically together, to be together and, mm -hmm. and how much we need to support each other right now. Yes. And I, I can see that that's important to you. Not mm -hmm. only is your faith in your Savior, Jesus Christ, as, as important, but how, how you're lifting each other up and yes. being there for each other. Now, when were you saved? In Bible school. You were saved in Bible in school. Bible school. I, I guess I was about 12. I'm not sure how old I was really. Amen. but. It was like the last day of Bible school. You know how every day we had a different, uh, our, our preacher did one like on David one day, and the next day it was something else. And, um, and I knew all week something wasn't right. You can and, always tell uh, when the Lord's speaking to you. But I was kind of ignorant too because I hadn't really been to church sure. that much. Sure, And um, But the last day of Bible school, there was a whole bunch of us saved. And, I mean, the preacher done an excellent job. You know, he really 
uh, he let us have it that last day. <laughs> and I knew, but I was so scared. I didn't know, I didn't really know what I was going on, but I knew I was lost. Right. So I came down, and I've always been terrified of water. Uh huh. So the day that we were baptized, I wasn't afraid to be really? baptized. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have baptized several people, and some of them have been, you know, some people are scared of water. Mm -hmm. See, that's a great testimony mm -hmm. of how God can see you through anything. But I wasn't afraid that day. It was really, it was amazing. But Amen. Well, you know, we thank, uh, thank the Lord for sending you this way. We see the light reflected in you and Brother Charles, and, and uh, it's, it's always a, a, a joy. You know, we want to keep you all in our prayers. And I, I look forward in the days to come that as we're, we're walking together in this. And remember, you're not alone. I, from my minimal experiences in, in, in some nursing homes, I know that it's very challenging even on a good day. And some days mm -hmm. it's, okay. it's, it's very, very challenging. You know, we've always tried to have things to encourage them because they've lost so much. Yes. They've lost their health. They've lost their home. They've yes. lost their husband. They've lost the ability to drive. That's yes. the hardest for them to give up. And so when they come to Hickory Woods, we try to give them a different life. And I try to tell them this is a new phase in your life. Mm -hmm. So... You have a phase where you uh, are a teenager. You have a phase where you have your family and your children grow up. And this is a phase, you know, a different one. So we always have things for them to look forward to. And we're right. constantly looking for things different and uh, things that uh, are unique. That's mm -hmm. why we do our calendar. I don't know if you've seen our calendar or not. Yes, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Y'all stay they, busy. They look forward to that. And, of course, they look forward. Uh, we have a preacher that comes every Sunday morning, and they look forward to that. Wonderful. Yes. And uh, we have a lot of things for them to look forward to, and that's one of the reasons this has been so difficult for us. Yes, yes. And we're going to continue baiting you and your staff in prayer. And, in fact, if you wouldn't mind, later, later on, I would appreciate uh, knowing the names of your staff so we can pray okay. over every single name, every single one. And, and uh, I'll get a hold of Miss Madonna and Abby as well, and we'll do the same thing for the local nursing home, homes here as, as well. It's a very important ministry, mm -hmm. very important ministry. And, and for me personally, you know, I'm 55, and if I were to be in a facility, I would want to be in one like yours, not necessarily because of how nice it is, but because I see Christ reflected in your eyes and in uh, the description of what's happening there. And I, I'm proud of that. I see that happening in, in the nursing homes here too as well. So I'm proud of our pool. And, and uh, it's something that we need to realize. This is an important ministry uh, that we need to support. And uh, so in the days to come, I'll be approaching you, and we'll find out okay. some new things. That'd be great. You can come and bring guitar anytime. When the time they is right, music. we will come out there and make a joyful noise. Actually, in January, we always have a country music band comes, and we pick and grin. Well, honey, I, I child, we're going to help out. <laughs> Good Lord willing, we will be there. Love it. So. <laughs> you know, I was, I was thinking of a passage of Scripture as you were telling me about all the things that you're doing and even what the residents are doing. It says, whatever you're doing, do all for the glory of the Lord. And I can see that happening here. And, I, and we want to thank you for your efforts towards our seniors. And, I appreciate your prayers. And we will definitely keep those up. And for all those others who are uh, part of New Zion, who have loved ones in nursing care facilities, long-term care facilities, or even for short-term, for rehab, we want you to know that we're praying for you and your family and all of those that are working at those facilities. We want you to know that we love you. We praise the Lord for you for doing those things. It's a really wonderful honor and blessing that you're doing. And uh, I thank you for being a part of the interview tonight. Thank you for having me. It's I been a blessing it. here tonight. I could not deny you or the Lord. Oh, my goodness. The Lord has done so many things for us. The and Lord, I can understand. Watch out. <laughs> I'll get you in here doing you do. <laughs> I'll never forget waking up from my surgery, too, and having five people from this church there. I have very and we hadn't even joined. We'd just been coming a few weeks, 
and you were there at 4.30 that morning when I got there for my surgery. <laughs> well, I, 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 very came, uh, I, I think we all came about the same time. All the deacons showed up mm -hmm. there that morning, and I was very proud. That meant a lot to me. Uh, and well, you mean a lot to us. You mean, you, you mean mm -hmm. instantly part of our family since the Lord just bound you together with us, yeah. and that's wonderful. You know, tonight, church, I hope you've enjoyed our time where we've got together and we've got to know one of our new church members, Miss Anita and Charles Peeler. Uh, they are, uh, they've only been here with a short period of time, and this whole virus causes us to where we can't fellowship, but that doesn't mean we can't get to know each other. If you would like to see an interview with someone uh, from our church, let me know. And, and as long as the, uh, the CDC and all the uh, hotlines of the, the coronavirus and the governor's office say that we're still doing okay by doing this, we'll continue this format. But safety is first and foremost. Tomorrow, we may not have the interview process, and we just may worship together in a different way. The key thing here is to remember our Lord is in control, and to serve him is the most important thing. Amen. We're going to make it. We're going to make it through flying colors here. I'm going to share a passage of scripture before we close tonight. And I'm going to read something out of Psalm 118. Psalm 118, and I'm going to read just two verses. It is Psalm 118, verses 5 and 6. And let me share that with you tonight. It says, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Church, I want you to understand. God's got you. He's never left you. He'll never forsake you. And that you can call on him when you are distressed. The word in the Hebrew, distressed, it, it can mean anything from worry afraid, even really afraid, feeling lonely, I can tell you this, if you call upon the name of the Lord, he will respond to you. I promise you that. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you tonight to call upon the name of the Lord. The Lord has made you a special promise. It says in the scriptures that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, asking to be saved, shall be saved. If you will call upon Jesus, he will help you. I promise you that. And in today's time, we need a Lord and Savior like him. And I thank the Lord for giving you strength to join us today to continue practicing the safe procedures that we're being told is the wise things to do. I thank you for staying in and joining us on our, on our, our live streaming broadcasts. Please support the ministries of this church as we go forward. And we want to let you know that we're supporting you thank in you. our ministries. And thank you for being a new member of the church. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for letting, listening it. to the Lord leading you to come here. Thank you. And if you'd like to communicate with us, you can do so on our website by NewZionBaptist.com. You can also do that by letter, 2900 Wadesboro Road South in Benton, Kentucky, 42025. Or you can send something to my email address, Dale. B, B as in Bible, Dale B. Taylor at yahoo.com. And again, my text uh, phone number is 270-350-2154. It has been an honor to be with you as we shared a little bit about our family and the good news of Jesus Christ today. I hope that you come back and join us next Wednesday and even Sunday morning. We have our Sunday morning worships at 1030 and our evening worship on Sunday at 6 o'clock. I invite you to join with us in any way you can on Facebook. And let's stay connected, whatever we do, because we are family. No matter what comes, we are family. I want to say we love you. Zion says, keep praying. Jesus loves you, and we'll see you next time.